Hello, I'm Chris McCarthy from the American Chemical Society, and welcome to this news briefing from the ACS Fall 2019 National Meeting in San Diego. We're joined today by Dr. Daniel Swall from Louisiana State University Agricultural Center. He's studying a new way to bump off ticks by drying up their saliva. Dr. Swall. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Um, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. So this is some of the work that's uh, been coming out of my lab. Uh, this was primarily performed by a PhD student, uh, Zilin Lee, um, and my group uh, has a poster later today if anybody is interested. Uh, so uh, as most of the media sources have been reporting, ticks are uh, kind of resurging uh, in importance. Uh, they are significant medical vectors um, and veterinary vectors um, of uh, significant diseases. Um, most, most of the time we hear about Lyme disease. It is uh, commonly reported uh, in the United States, and there's now an epidemic uh, in the northeastern side of uh, the United States. Um, but uh, kind of flying under the radar are other rickettsial diseases, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, um, and the like. So uh, the problem uh, is really highlighted by an inability to control these, these vectors. Um, most of the time, uh, these guys have developed resistance to uh, the commercialized insecticidal classes uh, that has uh, really prevented effective control measures. Um, so as uh, we are unable to, uh, to control these ticks, uh, the prevalence of diseases has uh, continued to increase uh, correspondingly. Um, so that has justified the need to, to not only identify a new way to control these ticks, but to identify a new target site that would uh, kind of bypass the current resistance mechanisms. Um, so uh, our lab is interested in a uh, type of an ion channel, that's a potassium ion channel that's termed an inward rectifier potassium channel. Uh, so these guys are, are rather unique in that they, uh, they are uh, ubiquitously expressed uh, in, in seemingly all, all cell types, um, and they're responsible for a lot of the membrane properties on these, uh, on these cells. Um, so we have uh, targeted this particular channel as a means to um, shut down the function of that individual cell. And uh, moving back over to ticks, we, we have uh, focused primarily on the salivary gland um, and asking the question if we can target these uh, potassium channels in the salivary gland, if we can stop the function um, of the gland itself. Uh, we believe the salivary gland is a, a valid target uh, for a variety of different reasons. Um, of course, just like you and people, if you aren't able to produce saliva, you're not able to chew your food, uh, the ticks use their saliva um, in order to, to, to suck your blood. Um, so um, if you dry up the saliva, they shouldn't be able to blood feed, and if they're not able to blood feed, uh, then they shouldn't be able to, uh, to, to um, transmit a pathogen. On top of that, the, uh, the tick salivary gland is actually a, a organ for osmoregulation, so the human blood has uh, a bunch of potassium and, and sodium um, inside of it, and, and if the tick doesn't excrete it back out, it will actually become toxic. So the blood meal will become toxic, and the salivary gland will actually is responsible for this and actually pumps out the uh, the ions as it's feeding um, back into the host or back into the person or the cow. Uh, so if we're able to shut this down, uh, then we would uh, in turn cause mortality to the tick. So the first question is uh, if we block these channels or modulate these channels, are we able to shut down the salivary gland? And as you can see in this short video clip, uh, the top uh, video is a, uh, is a normal tick. You can see the salivary bubble forming nicely um, right there, so the, the tick is able to salivate. Um, the, uh, the bottom video is going, uh, but as you can see, there is no saliva being produced. Uh, there's the, the, the chemical scaffold for that particular video, but we have a, a number of different compounds that uh, do essentially the same thing and, and, and shut down uh, the ability to secrete saliva. Um, next slide. Uh, so the, the next question was obviously, uh, can we translate this if we're able to shut down saliva? Are we able to, uh, to stop feeding? Uh, so this figure up here at the top left, this bar graph, uh, says indeed we actually are, as you can see. As you go into day four, five, and six, you get uh, almost no ingestion of blood, which is the white bars that have been after treatment with these, uh, this particular modulator. And those pictures underneath that graph, uh, the fluorescent figures, show the significant reduction of blood um, that is able to be ingested when, uh, when these chemicals are, these ticks are exposed to the chemical. So of course, the next logical step is, uh, is if we're able to stop salivation, stop blood feeding, are we able to induce mortality? Um, and again, uh, the answer to that is yes. 
Um, so uh, as you can see the, the, on this, uh, this line plot here, the, um, the closed circles are uh, ticks that were um, fed this cure modulator, and you can see about 75% mortality at the 12-hour time point, which is highlighted by that circle. Um, this is uh, important uh, because it takes about 12 hours, um, at least 12 hours, to transmit most of your bacterial pathogens, whether it's the pathogen causing Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, et cetera. Uh, so um, and to conclude, it, it does suggest that uh, one, the salivary gland is a valid target tissue to, uh, to kill ticks and stop blood feeding and also pathogen transmission. Um, and then on top of that, the cure channels uh, do appear to be a, uh, a valid target, uh, target site to do so. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? And please state your name and affiliation before asking the question. Katie Cottingham from the American Chemical Society. So how would you apply these compounds? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, right now um, in veterinary health, uh, ticks are a major problem for cows and, and your companion animals, dogs primarily. Uh, so a lot of these compounds are fed through treats uh, for your companion animals or injectables for uh, uh, for your livestock, um, they have a long, long, la long life, and uh, you know, usually two to three weeks of control. Um, so that would be one potential delivery method. Uh, we're working on some other translational delivery methods for for Lyme disease. Obviously, uh, vaccinating humans uh, for something like this might be uh, well. It is probably impractical. So uh, probably targeting uh, targeting reservoirs of the disease and things of that nature. Does the tick essentially starve to death? Is that how it dies, or is there actually some toxicity of these compounds? Great question. Yeah, so um, it, it, the, it's actually acute toxicity uh, that's derived from an inability to osmoregulate. So we've taken, I didn't show this data, but we have performed, uh, actually taken images of the, uh, of the saliva, and you can quantify the amount of potassium and sodium and chloride in that saliva. Um, so we're stopping the salivary gland from working and producing the saliva, but they're actually um, not able to, to handle the, uh, the salts from the human blood. Um, so that blood, that we're making the blood meal toxic, essentially. So the potassium is become, we think, becoming toxic. Katie Cottingham again from ACS. Um, so, when would this be available as a product, do you think, and have you partnered with a company? Uh, we have not partnered with a company. You know, right now uh, we're still kind of in the, uh, probably pro definitely the proof of concept stage of this, of trying to validate these, these channels, uh, validate uh, the salivary glands itself as a, as a target. So um, we are a ways away from commercializing something, I think. Uh, but, uh, you know, fundamental science uh, has to happen prior to commercialization of any type of product, and that's, that's really the, the phase of science that we're at right now. Hi, uh, Bela Buslik, ACS. Um, when you're... Uh, it, it trying to uh, to essentially affect uh, uh, you know the, the, the tick uh, and I've noticed one of your compounds is, is a, a, a penicillin uh, hypertension uh, drug. Uh, how do you uh, how do you intend to uh, to feed that to the uh, to, uh, to the tick? prior to biting a, a human being. Yeah, so the question is about delivery, right? Is, how, how do yeah. you deliver this? Uh, so yeah, that, that kind of follow-ups on, on Katie's question of, uh, of how do we get this to the tick? And, and the answer to that is we could um, do an injectable for a livestock. We can feed the, the chemical through treats for companion animals. Uh, for humans, uh, we, we wouldn't give a drug to a human to control this. The idea would be to, to figure out a way to, to prevent ticks from feeding on the natural uh, rodents and foxes and things like that that's out there that keeps this whole thing, this whole disease cycle going. So, um, so basically you, you, your, your approach is kind of mass population control rather than, uh, than trying to, uh, to hit it when, uh, when it's trying to bite, it, uh, bite an individual. Yeah, I mean, I think that they're, they kind of go hand in hand, right? So in order to do population control, you have to get the individual ticks as they're biting. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, there's a number of different ways. Like I said, this is still kind of proof of concept of being able to get, uh, to be able to shut down the salivary gland from working to stop feeding and then to, to actually kill the tick through this unexplored target site or at least underexplored target site um, is, is kind of where our goal and direction is at this point. It's saying, hey, here's a new way of, of being able to do this. Delivery and translation is, is the next step and it's not something we've addressed yet. Thank you. Laura Cassidy, American Chemical Society. Is there any hope that you could maybe put these compounds in a spray that somebody could apply and then when the tick bit them, they would ingest the spray or does it have to be through the blood meal? Um, I don't think we would get an acti activity of these compounds if we sprayed them on ticks, um, primarily because we're targeting, trying to target the salivary gland. It's not a neurotoxic insecticide or it wouldn't be a neurotoxic action. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, sprays for insecticides do work, right? Um, you know, if it's a neurotoxic insecticide, they do spray them. So uh, probably not for this class, not for this mechanism of action, um, but insecticide sprays do work. And Katie Cottingham, ACS. Um, so would this work, this strategy work on other pests too? Are you looking at other, you know, like fleas and mosquitoes or something? We like haven't that? done fleas, but we've got a, a, a good number of uh, different arthropod or vector, uh, insect vectors that, uh, that it does work on. So we've published it already on flies. Uh, so it stops feeding of flies, um, stops feeding of, uh, of a couple of the different arthropods, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS 2019 San Diego. And please join us for our next press conference at 11.30 a.m. today on a device that vanishes on command after military missions. Thank you.